Hello dear friends, this is you with Humphreys. I appreciate you tuning in on me again. May God bless you as I bring you this little short message on the uh, subject of uh, the cursing of the fig tree. And in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, the 21st chapter, we, we read where Jesus came to a fig tree and he saw fruit on the tree because the tree was full of leaves, but he found no fruit on it. So he spoke to the tree and said, Henceforth you shall bear no more fruit. And immediately the fig tree began to wither and to die. And so we, we read of the fact that Jesus cursed the fig tree. The only thing that we read where he cursed anything when he was on the earth, but it was the fig tree. Now, what can we learn from this incident? We ask God to help us now to help us to find the truth and reveal it to all who will listen. Amen. But there's a truth here to be found. In the first place, the fig tree that was full of leaves. And in those days, and I suppose it's true today, but in those days when the tree began to bear fruit, it would first begin to, to, uh, to produce leaves, big leaves. And every time the leaves began to produce, the fruit would be produced right behind it. So this tree should have been full of fruit because it was full of leaves. But there was no fruit on it. No fruit at all. So therefore, you could say that this tree was hypocritical. It was all leaves and no fruit. And Jesus cursed it. Now then, there is a lesson here for all of us. And that is that we are born of the Lord, saved by grace, we belong to God. And if you are a child of God right now, the Lord is there with you, He loves you, He's planted you, He's saved you, redeemed you, and you belong to Him. You're not your own anymore, you belong to Christ. The Bible says then that we are ought to realize that He is the fig tree and we are the fruit of that tree and we ought not to be just leaves but ought to bear fruit we ought not just to talk our Christianity but we must walk our Christianity we must learn to practice what we preach and that's important the Bible says over in, uh, in the book of uh, John in the 15th chapter Jesus said I am the true vine and my father I mean, and, and you are my you're the branches my father is the gardener. Every branch that is, does not bear fruit, he takes it away. But every branch that bears fruit, he purges it so that it will bring forth more fruit. So here's the truth that Jesus is saying, I'm the true vine and, uh, and you're the branch of that vine spiritually. And you're to bear fruit for the Lord. You're not to be just leaves, you're to bear fruit. And among the leaves, you're to bear those that fruit that will praise God and help others. And so we need to learn to be fruit-bearing Christians. And we need to recognize that the Father is the gardener, and if there is no fruit on the vine, he'll cast it away. And so there's a branch that's in the vine. Maybe they're Christians, but they're not bearing fruit. But they will die early. They will be taken out of this life early because they're not bearing fruit. They're not doing the will of God. And though they're going to heaven, they need to recognize that they need to bear fruit. And when you bear fruit, you're going to re reach a, and, and receive a reward in, in this life. And a life that is to come, you'll receive rewards throughout all eternity because you're bearing fruit. And so, Christian, bear fruit. The Bible says in the same chapter 15, Jesus says, Abide in me, and I abide in you. As the, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abides in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me. So try to learn to abide in Christ, dear Christian. Believe that he's there. He sees you right now. He hears your prayer. He knows where you are. He knows what you're going through. He cares for you. He loves you. And he's there to help you right now to get through it. You will get through all of it. Just wait on the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. And let God work His work in you. 
Let him per perceive and then, oh, perform his love in you, and you shall come forth with a song and a, and a victory because you belong to God, and you're going to win. The Bible says then that if we abide in Christ and he abides in us, we shall bear much fruit, for herein is our Father glorified. You want to glorify God? You need to bear fruit for the Lord. You need to bear fruit. And so it's important that we know to do that. The other place is that we need to recognize that uh, the fruit, the kind of fruit we are bearing. And it's found over in the book of Galatians in the fifth chapter. It says this, the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience long-suffering, and meekness, and gentleness, and faith, and, oh, praise God, self-denial. And so this is, these are the fruits of the, of the Spirit that dwells in you, dear Christian. And they dwell in your life. Every time you forgive somebody, you're bearing fruit for the Lord. Every time you pray, you're bearing fruit for the Lord. Every time you read the Bible, you're bearing fruit. Every time you, you look up out and help somebody in need, you're bearing fruit. Every time, every time, oh God, that you go out of your way to do something for somebody else, you're bearing fruit. Oh, every time you deny yourself, you're bearing fruit. And so let the Holy Spirit lead you to be a fruit-bearing Christian. Not just leaves, not just talk, but, oh, praise God, activity that you have or not only a walk, talk with God, but you walk with God because you're bearing fruit for Him. Praise the Lord. One other word I would say in closing. He cursed the tree, but he had a right to do it if he wanted to do it. The Lord God is sovereign. The Lord God made the tree to start with. If He made the tree, He has a right to do whatever He wants to with it. He's God. He doesn't have to ask us if this is a good thing or a right thing or a wrong thing for him to do. He does what he does and he needs to ask no one why, how, or for anybody's approval. He's sovereign. He's God. Over in the Bible, in the book of Romans in the ninth chapter, he said, Esau, have I hated Jacob, have I loved? Well, that bothers some people, but actually he could have, he sh he could have easily hated both of them. Both of them were unscrupulous people that were evil and they were doing wrong and they were living in sin. And he said, Esau have I hated. He had every reason to hate. And, and Jacob have I loved. But because of his grace he chose Jacob. Hallelujah. Can I not do with my own what I will? You see, God owns it all. And so praise God. He will do what he will. And it will always be the right thing. Praise the Lord. He saved you, dear friend. And you belong to God. Give Him the glory. Hallelujah. And so, try to bear fruit for Him. Try to bear fruit. Oh, praise God. He will be pleased with you. And it will please Him when you seek to find and follow the way of the Lord and the word of the Lord. And seek always to bind fruit. To bear fruit for Him. Praise God. And He'll bless you. Every time you... You quit worrying about something and turn it over to Him. Your bad fruit. Praise the Lord God. Amen. And when you bring someone to know Christ, you're bearing fruit. You're bearing fruit. So we need to do that. We need. I love that old song, Bringing in the Sheaves. Oh, yes. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy Waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, oh, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the morning, sowing in the shadow, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest, 
then the time of reaping we shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheaves sing it with me bringing in the sheaves oh bringing in the sheaves we shall come rejoicing bringing in the sheaves bringing in the sheaves oh bringing in the sheaves Oh, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheep. Amen. May you be fruit-bearing Christians that will please God and help others. God grant it. If you need to pray and never not sure that you're going to heaven, you need to pray a prayer and say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for sinners. And I'm a sinner. I believe he died for me. I believe he paid for all my sins. I believe he rose again. I believe he's coming back. Oh, come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me live for you as the Lord of my life. Amen. Pray a prayer like that. And you shall know that you're on your way to heaven. That God saves you. Saves you from a devil's hell. And gives you a home in heaven. Praise the Lord. Find your good church and worship with God's people. May the Lord be your strength and have hope and help. And may you learn to walk as well as talk through Christian life. Amen and amen.